Hi, this is Frank Carmody. We're going to take a look at um, some more assembly uh, options. So we're going to start out by creating a couple of IPTs um, to incorporate into our assembly. <coughs> so our, our customary not responding comes up when we do a new standard IPT. Okay, and at this point, uh, we have our IPT open, and we're just going to create a very simple uh, couple of um, couple of uh, IPTs here. So, um, the first one we're going to make is a uh, just a simple rectangular solid uh, with a hole in it. So, we're going to go first. We're going to dimension it. Uh, this one is going to be uh, five inches. Zoom all, get it back in focus there, and we're going to dimension the other side uh, as three inches. Okay, and zoom all. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a, a rectangle in the center, or I'm sorry, a square in the center. <clears throat> and we're going to dimension that to be uh, two inches, or I'm sorry, let's just go one inch by one inch. I should have moved my dimensions out so they didn't intersect each other here, but bad planning on my part. Okay, then we're going to dimension our uh, the square to be right in the middle. So if we have a one-inch square on a three-inch side, that would mean the space between it and the other side is one inch. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and do that on the other uh, to one of the right or left-hand sides. Uh, so if we have a one inch square on a five inch side, that means we have two inches on each side to make it centered. And zoom all just to look at that there. Okay, so our 2D is done. We go finish 2D sketch and then we're going to extrude this and we're just going to make it a uh, one inch here. Okay, so if I zoom all, notice I click the area outside of the square. It gives me my extruded shape there and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. All right, so that's our first IPT we're going to use there. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and save it. We call this Lesson 11 uh, Block with Hole and Save. OK, now we're going to do a new IPT again. So we're just going to leave that first one open to a new IPT. And this one's going to be even more simple. Now, when you first, when you select which plane to work on, uh, you should realize that that's going to affect how these things come into your uh, your assembly. Now, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we can move them around in the assembly, but if you want to make things easy on yourself, you should um, you should pay attention to to which uh, plane you're starting your um, IPT on, and you can make things a little bit easier on yourself. Just 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 notice that as you go along. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and make a square here. Right click OK. We're going to dimension this. And in inventor land, we don't need any space between things. So we can put an exactly one inch square in an exactly one inch hole. Now in real life, that might be a problem. But, uh, but in inventor, uh, it's possible. We don't need any space between things. So I'm going to go ahead and right click OK. Right click Finish 2D Sketch. And we're going to go ahead and extrude this. And essentially, we're just going to make this one inch by one inch by six inch peg here. Okay. All right. So zoom in. So now we have our kind of our peg. I'm going to right click. Oops. And we're going to save this off. We're going to save it as block with hole. And we're going to call this square peg. And I'm purposely making my um, file names different for lesson 11 here just, just to avoid confusion. So save. Okay, so we have our two IPTs. Notice that we have them down. We can switch between them on this tabbed interface down at the bottom here. Notice where I'm doing that. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make our assembly. Okay, so we're going to go click assembly. So notice I did my drop down and I did 
uh, assembly for new assembly. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to click place, and we want to place. Um, we're going to place uh, one of these blocks here. Okay, so we're going to click place, and notice it gives us. Uh, interestingly enough, it gives us uh, uh, a file selection. Now, in, in previous projects, um, this is a little bit different. Okay, but but in Adventure 2012, 2013, it comes right up with the file selector. Okay, and we're just going to go block. First, okay, notice that it puts the first one on there. Now I could keep clicking to get more. We're going to right click OK to get out of the placement. Okay, now notice the first one we have here. If we take a look to the left, notice that the first component added here has this little thumbtack on its icon. Okay, and if we right click, that is uh, that means that this grounded is selected. Okay, and what grounded means is that if I am out of a tool, okay, I'm not in a tool, I can't drag this around, okay, because it's drowned. Notice when I click on it, my mouse actually changes to have a thumbtack right there. So you can see that thumbtack right there. And that's how you know uh, why that isn't moving, because it's grounded. Now I can remove that if I, if I really want to, if I have some reason to, I can right click and then click on that. Now it's not grounded. Now I can move it around, okay. But in general, you want to put your most important part first. Okay, and when I say most important, I mean you want to put the part in of the assembly that's kind of the main part of the assembly. And usually there's some logical piece that fits that, um, that description. Other times, you know, anything will work, and then you can just set the grounding uh, as you fit, see fit later on. Okay, let's go ahead and click place again. And now we're going to go to the square peg. We're going to open it, and we're going to click once to the right. I just want one of them on there this time. We're going to right click and click OK. All right, so now we have our kind of our second square peg there. Now let's say that I made a mistake. I say, oops, I needed two holes, not one. Okay, and now I have a problem, right? Because now I have one hole and one peg, and I needed two holes and two pegs. Okay, so let's say that we want to go ahead and actually practice this during the video. So, so make your make your make your uh, your block with one hole and then come back in and we're going to learn how to correct that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to edit the um, we're actually going to edit the IPT from inside of the assembly. Uh, so we're actually going to double click on that block. Oops. Now see you can see what happened here. If I have the file open, do you see how I had the IPT open? It actually just switches to that window. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're we've already saved the block with the hole so we're just going to close it. We're going to close the square peg, and we're going to just have our assembly open. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and try that again. We're going to double click that thing, that uh, block, and now look what happens. See how our peg actually becomes kind of translucent on the right hand side here, and notice on the um, in the um, explorer bar, um, notice that. Uh, Everything is grayed out except for the block with the hole. Okay, that means that you're actually, it's just like you're in an IPT file at this point. Okay, so you can do anything you can do inside of an IPT file just from an assembly. Um, so in the end, you can really work straight out of assembly files. You don't have to actually go in and create IPTs, but we can do that later on. Okay, so for just for now, we're just editing an IPT from inside an assembly file. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we can open up, uh, we can double click Sketch 1. <clears throat> okay, so now let's say I want to move this over, so I'm going to edit the dimension. Let's say it's a five, it's you know it's five inches across. We're going to make a one inch space. Okay, now um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, actually create another square here inside because I want my second hole right. Okay, I'm going to dimension this again. And look what's happening here. I got a mess, don't I? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move my dimensions over. Kind of just organize my dimensions here, so uh, to make things a little easier to see. Okay, so my left hand, my right hand block. I'm gonna move all the dimensions to the right side, and my left hand block. I'm gonna leave them on the left side. So I'm gonna make this square exactly the same, one inch make this one inch also okay now I could make a driven dimension here okay that means that I could I could do all kinds of things with dimensions that would make these kind of similar 
um, not similar, but would control the placement of the of the squares. But we're not going to do that for here. There's a lot of math that you can get into uh, with these dimensions. Um, but we're just going to do it kind of in a plain manner here. And dimension again, I kind of off the rails there. Okay. All right, so we have all our dimensions in. We're going to right click. We're going to finish 2D sketch. Oops, now look what happened. Okay. Well, my sketch now has two holes, but my extrusion only has one. Okay, that's a problem, right? Because I needed two holes in my extrusion. Okay, so we're going to right click that extrusion. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to delete and recreate that extrusion. Okay, so we're going to right click on there. Um, now, we could do edit feature, right? Okay, we could. I'm sure there's a way to do it through here, but this deleting and redoing it is probably the most straightforward way. So we're going to right click, delete. Now we're going to make sure that we don't, we uncheck this consume, consume sketches and features. Okay, so we have to uncheck this or our sketch will be deleted also. Okay, so we're going to click OK. That leaves us with the sketch. Now we're going to just extrude again. Remember, one inch is, was our length here or our depth click OK alright so I'm finished uh, editing editing my piece I have my two holes now I'm gonna right click I'm gonna finish edit and now notice in my Explorer bar every I have my assembly every nothing is grayed out so I'm you know we know that I'm back into my assembly All right okay now I obviously need a second block here right uh, so we're gonna click place and we're gonna click uh, square pegs already selected we're gonna click open we're going to click once and we're going to right click OK. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to um, to assemble this. And what we want on here is I'm going for kind of a table look. OK, so I'm going to actually lock in these. And for this assembly, we're actually going to lock in these, these pegs so they can't move around at all. All right. OK, so we have a, on a kind of a these rectangular solid type shapes here. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to constrain. Okay, so we're going to click constrain. Okay, now um, the thing that we're going to do, we're going to use our mates only. So we're going to use mate, mate, and we're going to use mate flush. Okay, the, so the first thing we're going to do is a mate, mate. Okay, so we're going to click on one side of our um, of our peg. We're going to click on one side of our hole. Notice we get our nice sound. All right, we're going to click apply. Okay, now this is where constraining gets a bit difficult. All right, <clears throat> so what we've got here now is we have this this block is now constrained to the side of the hole. Okay, so I can't move it. Oh, I can't. It's letting me do it here. Let's see if I can get it good. Uh, okay, what can happen? Let's take a look at what just happened to me. Now I thought I was moving it just a little bit, but what can happen is. You see how far away I just put that? Okay, once something is constrained, a little tiny movement can actually um, uh, move things quite a bit, okay? So you want to be very careful at this point moving things around. So let's just move it a little bit off <clears throat> and notice that, oops, zoom all. Notice that my edge, the edge of my block there is just off from the, um, from the, Hole, right so notice that I can't really move it off of that plane now it looks like I can because of the way that the view is but it, I assure you that I cannot <clears throat> and I'm having trouble seeing so let's go back into the peg and we're gonna double click the peg here so we can see we're gonna change its material okay so we're gonna click this default here and let's make it something really visible okay let's make it um, No, I'm going to go with old-fashioned wood. <laughs> so we're going to walnut mat natural polish. Okay, so we're going to uh, right-click, finish edit. Okay, now we can kind of see see our uh, picture a little bit better here. All right, so we've done our first. Um, we come exactly over the top of the, the peg. We can kind of see that now I'm trying to move it, but it will only move uh, so that that one side is locked into the side of the hole. Okay, so now I'm, I'm on my way to locking it in place. So I'm going to click on the one side. Notice that I get this arrow. Okay, so if I zoom in here, notice that when I hover over the, the surface of the peg, I get that nice arrow coming up. What I don't want to see, what you want to avoid, 
is if I just see a line right here, I don't want to click. Okay. If I'm if I'm uh, constraining a surface, I want to see that arrow coming up off of the surface. Okay. I wanna, only want to click there. So I bring it around so I can use the cube between constraints. So I've selected one side of the peg. Now I'm going to come in. Notice I see my arrow again. I didn't do it on an edge. I see my arrow coming off of the surface. Okay, I click and apply. Okay, so now in theory, if I bring this, if I bring my view up to see, kind of looking at the peg straight on, I cancel out of my constraint again. Notice that now, when I move that peg, I can't move it anywhere. So let's let's bring the view around again. So just looking at the face. Notice I can't I can't move it either way. Okay, I'm trying to move it side to side. If I bring it around this way, I'm trying to move it side to side and I can't do it. Okay, the one thing I can do though still is I can move it up and down. Notice it stays in the hole up and down. Now this is different from when we constrained the circle peg to the circular hole, right? Uh, because we only had to do the center point of the circle. So on a, on a rectangular solid pe peg, you actually have to uh, constrain both sides. Okay, now finally we're going to bring in another type of constraint and this is called the mate flush. Okay, so notice that with a mate, mate, we did, uh, it basically puts two uh, surfaces together like a sandwich. Now a mate flush, what that's going to do is that's going to say that two surfaces are coplanar. That means that they're on the same plane or they're exactly even. Okay, so if I click select one plane, so I've got my mate flush, select one plane, select an, or sorry, select one face, select a second face, and click apply. Notice that now my peg is completely locked in. Okay, I can't move it anywhere. And in general, that's what you're looking for. Okay, when you constrain things together, you want them completely locked in. All right, now let's go ahead and just, we're just going to repeat our process on the other side. Okay, so I'm going to click constrain. I have a mate mate. I'm going to choose one surface of the peg. Notice my arrow coming off. I'm going to choose the surface of the hole, the corresponding surface hole. I click apply. Actually, you know, it's interesting. I've been clicking apply and then cancel OK. The OK button is a combination of apply and exit the uh, and exit. So actually I can just click OK to make it go away. A lot of times you can only do one constraint at a time because you have to move the pieces. Notice that I have this, if I have this here, there's no way for me to select the inside of that hole. So I actually have to move the piece out a little bit, then use my cube to kind of move the, the assembly around, and then I can go back in and constrain the next surface to the other surface. And know how, notice how I'm, I can also zoom in to kind of really get in there, right? Okay, so I've selected that corresponding surface of the hole. And I click OK. Actually, I don't really need to click OK this time. All right, so I just need to click Apply. I can leave the constraint dialog open. And now I'm actually going to go around to the back side of this. I kind of swing it around. I'm going to use my scroll to scroll out. And I'm actually going to flush up the uh, bottom of the peg to the, the opposite side of the, the uh, block here. So I'm going to mate flush. So I click on the bottom of the peg, the bottom surface, the bottom surface of the block. And now I'm going to click OK to apply and exit the constraint dialog. All right, so there we go. OK, so this is kind of our wacky shape we made um, just to practice our constraints and editing uh, an IPT from inside an assembly. Uh, good luck. Uh, when you're finished with this, just uh, upload it as instructed by your teacher.